Ja, ja. en kramp gezoek. Bienvenue. C'est qui qui va le faire The special aim for us here in this workshop was to find out about the connection between the music of the fin de siècle and the music which was invented by that time, the new music of that time, the impact of the language within that modern music of that time and the impact of, of the dance to that music, to that modern music. In my experience as an opera singer, I have done Fledermaus so often and it was always funny to see that there are big differences between those people who, are, who like to move and those who refuse to dance. We're going to do a full circle round to go all the way to where you started. There's often um, the myth and the urban legend of the singers that can't dance. Um, but they're very musical people. Just dancers and singers use music differently. Nowadays, it's not self-understanding to have a dance school, to have a dance training. I thought it would be a good subject for this, for this class here to focus on the difficulty which it, which it brings uh, to combine dancing and singing on stage. People often think when you're dancing on stage, it goes against the singing. But it actually doesn't. If you know how to use your body well, it should make the singing more easy. Because you use your breath to initiate a movement and you use it to initiate the singing as well. Now you can start to move a little bit. And then, as this transport, yeah, as it's a sort of change of atmosphere. Okay. And it, it, otherwise, I don't get the, uh, the difference. Yeah. As a singer, you, you can't, in a concert where you're bound to one place on stage, you can't move. You have to try to get this moving idea as a way to relax your body. The same way moving can be relaxing, not moving but the imagination of a movement can be relaxing. And this is the thing we need to find out. I didn't plan this actually. I sent it in case someone might be interested. And on the first day Fabian came to me and said, this piece is for my voice, I have to sing it. Actually, the piece is a piece called White Lies. It's a duet from an opera I wrote from 2014 to 2016. So it took two years. <laughs> um, and the two singers who will be seeing it are Fabien, the tenor, and Emma, Emma Posman, the soprano. <laughs> The other focus was language, well, the use of the spoken word in the, the music uh, of the early 19th century, it was, it was coming up. They have had operetta before, but there they, they just spoke. They had dialogues in between the music. And then the Vienna school, they invented a system of mixed up versions, you, of half singing, half speaking, of uh, more singing than speaking, more speaking than singing, and all these things were even written down and noted with different or new invented methods of notation. That was a great opportunity this week to learn more about how, how German is sung, especially with consonances which are so complex. And to have Dietrich's advice on this is superb. I wanted to give them the chance to be able to waltz in a production. So it's not to create dancers, but it's to give them some of the tools that dancers have. 
certainly there is something you can read in people when you're physically moving with them. And Darren was great for this. He really understands bodies, not dancers, not people as performers, but bodies, using your own body, not to try and be something else, but to go back to what you already have and to use that in a way that's, that's expressive.